Hello there everyone, so welcome. I'm going to be reviewing this time the uh, Easterlings of Rune faction. Uh, let's put on very hard here. I was actually checking some um, some custom battle against Dwarves of Erebor, just testing a couple of units and I'm going to explain that um, on the review. So let's check this out. Let's start it. No need for that introduction. Don't want any copyright claims here. Um, just because they use a lot of music from the Lord of the Rings, it's not the image itself, but uh, the the music from the Lord of the Rings, of course, it can be um, a problem on these on, on if you try to stream or or go for YouTube with these. Okay, so let's discuss Rune. Basically, a uh, first brief overview that I would like to tell you is that, of course, you as you can see, you start with an empire. I mean, you already start with eight regions. Um, it takes like 50 turns for any other faction that starts with two or one to, to get to that, so, you know, it's already a good a good starting position. But, in terms of diplomacy, you do have enemies of the Dol Amroth. I don't know why, since they are here in the map, they, you will never fight them. Um, well, you can, but very unlikely. And you have Dale and the Dwarves of Erebor. You do not have Darwinian. Take advantage of that. You will attack when you are ready. Okay, guys? That's that's the best advice there. You also have to defeat the Dale, the Vale of Darwinian, and the Dwarves of Erebor. Okay, so this basically means, m means moving here and conquering all of this and anything that they have conquered as well. So all the territory over here, that's going to be yours. Um, now I would like to tell you that, for instance, Rune has... Um, since it has three enemies and they are all different, you know, because this faction also has access to some elves, if you let them get to it. Um, this Dale faction is always, you know, it's a human-based based faction. And then you have the dwarves with heavy infantry. Since you have these different enemies, I would say that the campaign is rather long. Uh, just because you're going to have to adapt to each of the enemies um, and make small changes on, on the armies. Um, even though you can streamline the armies, but still, uh, you're still going to have to uh, make accounts for, for those special units. Now, you start with many uh, settlements and you have good early picks. Uh, there are some settlements here and here and here. Uh, for you to pick for, you know, rebel settlements. And you also have a settlement right about here that you should aim for. You have settlements to the north, but I wouldn't go for them since this is such an easily defensive line. I mean, uh, you have these rivers to defend. I would always try to defend here and dominate Darwinian before proceeding to the north. Um, there are several rebel settlements here that you can capture, but I think it's just... It's, uh, I believe it just spreads you too much. Of course, if you are willing to go through the north and maybe fight the dwarves before you fight the Orwinian, that's up to you. Now, you can rush, you can rush the Orwinian. You actually start with some good units and good army production capabilities. Uh, I mean, you already have three clan guards, for instance, they're very good. And you can produce immediately some important units. Sorry about that, guys, I just woke up. Uh, you also uh, start with a scout so that can immediately check the Reunion, you know, and honestly they have nothing in the early game. So you, you actually have a much better claim to rushing Norwegian than the other way around. Norwegian can't really rush Rune easily because of the, all of these men. Now, I would like to note that, of course, most of your generals are cavalry, uh, as you know, and the rebel settlements tend to have ill-equipped units to deal with that cavalry, and they will sally out, because they will consider that they have a better men. Like, you can attack with just these guys and pretty much win this settlement, honestly. Of course, a lot of micromanaging, but a lot of charge, repeat, but still it is possible. Or just send these guys and you can capture that place. So, that's something that I would like to note. Now, you will have split north and south armies. Oh, I'm sorry, this is not the north. Southern army and northern army. Like, you're gonna need some armies here. So, this is a must. This is a must because you will be attacked from the north. No matter... It doesn't matter when. It's just a matter of time. 
and you will still need to be prepared because if not it will just prompt the AI to come against you so uh, do mind that you start in a split up position up until you conquer the, f the whole Vale of the Winion uh, after that well pretty much your your armies have uh, a good a good uh, how to say a good wandering around you know they will be able to move faster from one place to another uh, of course, if you control the lake, or the sooner you control the lake, the sooner you can ferry troops over uh, to anyone there, anywhere that you would like. Now, let's start with the bodyguards in terms of military. So, you do note that your Lokikan, it's not your cavalry, it's Easterling War Chariots. This is both interesting and both a problem, because uh, chariots, in, in my hand, they actually fall too easily to javelin fire, and or to even missile fire. And they cannot engage any pikes at all, they would just be destroyed. So, considering the high numbers of pikemen that you are having to face on all of these uh, factions, it's not really a plus, I would say. This is actually a weakness. Of course, it all mine, uh, it all, it's all the matter of how you use them, uh, that's what uh, people will say, but uh, however, if you're having to to micromanage your general a lot, it becomes a problem uh, for, as well for you. So you do have some other generals I would like to note. You have these uh, Dragon's Wrath Guildsmen as a general, that's actually perfect. Um, you know, and he's actually on a good mo uh, place to do so, you know, you do need a heavy infantry unit um, here on the north to deal with any heavy dwarven units. Oh my god, sorry about that. <coughs> it's not the game, trust me guys. It's just the hour that I'm up. You also have some look at flag rims. Now these guys effective against armor. I've been testing these guys. They're really good. Especially for their upkeep. Not just because their stats. Especially because of their upkeep. They will hold the line and they will cause casualties as well. So that's a, actually a good unit. Now there is an additional general. Different Order. general. Which is a look at Narrim. Now these guys are heavy archers, no matter where you uh, you see it. However, do note that the, the accuracy it's a little bit lacking. If it was very high, I would be much more interested on these guys. They're still the best that you can muster, but it doesn't mean that they're completely, uh, you know, overpowered or anything like that. They are not. They're just, you know, the best archers they can make your field, and that'll be it. Now. In terms of roster units, it's a great roster overall. Um, I don't believe they they have weakness actually in the beginning, as the the developer state, and I'll just state why. Because you know, l let's just state to this. So in the beginning, you're gonna have a medium cavalry, five ten, and the Kanish raiders, which are uh, you know five nine, and have the missile attack of three. You know, honestly, the difference between these guys and these guys. It's negligible. I mean, I would always get Candish Raiders. The charge bonus is negligible there, uh, instead of getting Horse Guard. Um, pretty much, pretty much, I would always get Candish Raiders instead of getting Horse Guards, uh, just because you can do the same things of charging and stuff. Uh, it will still be effective if you charge well enough, and you still have the bonuses of having missile attack. By the way, they do have a high accuracy, which is really nice, and bonuses against horses. So it's kind of an interesting idea. Now let's check out the... Uh, I'm just checking the early game and I'll like to note that this is probably one of the best units of the early game. 275 upkeep for a 611 unit that has skilled against mounts and effective against armor. You can pretty much just spam these guys in the early game and you'll be effective against anything that comes around. You know, it's just... An awesome unit. I think it's probably the best unit of Rune, considering their use and um, everything. I mean, it's one of the units that you can get the earliest, it doesn't cost too much, it has good defense, good attack, skilled against mounts and effective against armors. I mean, good stamina. Just use these guys as much as you can. I would never, prob I would probably, if I was playing, I would never get clan warriors unless I would like to have more units um, and I was lacking the production of clan guards. Because these guys are just inferior no matter what you, you see to them. Um, and this is one of the points. I mean, considering what you're up against, I do believe that Rune has exactly the needed early game. Now, 
in terms of rangers, then you have even better. You have an effective against armor. These guys do not lack effective against armor, by the way. They have an effective against armor crossbowmen with missile attack of 8. Now, these are exactly kind of like the crossbowmen from Darwinian. Um, and you've seen that they are quite effective on my campaign. So, you know, it's, it's pretty cool. Um, then you have Candish Hunters. These are your basic missile units. You know, this 170 average with a missile attack of 3. If the missile attack was a little bit higher, it would be better. But still, these guys compensate for that by not being that mediocre in, in, uh, in a fight. And it's not a bad app, keep it well. So let's now review what's up for us in the end game. So in terms of st uh, the stables, you do get access to Easterling War Chariots and of course the Loka Ines Rim. Now, you may be surprised that I'm going to tell you that these guys are not really that uh, powerful considering, or that these guys are not actually your best cavalry option. Um, I'll, I'll show you in a moment, but still, they are very good cavalry. 9 attack, charge bonus is amazing, 13, and a defense of 24. It, it takes quite a while to destroy these guys, although they do not have a shield, so they are vulnerable to crossbowmen. Be careful with that. You know, people tend to think that they are completely overpowered. They are not. They can be destroyed easily. Uh, in terms of the army barracks, well, you, you then have to go into the local unit units. Look at Gamp Rim, these are your basic pikemen. And the attack of 4, it's kind of. You know, 415, to be, to be truthful, guys, this Loki Gamp Rim is kind of like the Enidwaith uh, pikes. So consider that these are not overpowered pikes. I mean, the dwarves' the worst pike is actually better than yours. So um, consider on that, of course, in terms of upkeep, it's actually really good that it stays on 320. I think the upkeep for this faction is probably one of the best in the in the campaign because you're gonna have the money. You're gonna have the money to support lots of these units, which is also, you know, you're a horde faction unit. Trust me, you are a horde faction unit, and you should use that. Now let's e examine the other units. The local flag rim, the effective against armor. I think this is pretty much your base unit uh, later in the game. You're gonna need these guys to face off against anyone else because everyone will be armored. Basically, that's it. Um, then you have the Dragon's Wrath Guildsmen. Get as many as you can from these guys, because 13 attack usually means that a unit would not have that defense, and they do. They're actually your best defending unit so far. And finally, you have the Locusian Rim. Now, these guys kind of are more similar to, um, to what the Dwarves, for instance, have to offer. It's kind of bad that they are skilled against mounts. That doesn't add anything into the the late game, because you're not going to be facing lots of mounts. Perhaps on Dale's, uh, Dale's armies, but it's not something that you're going to have to, to worry about. You're going to have to worry about lots of Dwarven ar ar armored units, and these guys will hold the line, but they will not kill them. So, you can say that. Now let's check on the uh, rangers, where you get the Lokanar Rim, of course. You've already seen this, I mean, they can use sharpened stakes. Uh, again, not a... Of course, uh, you kind of need a unit that have the stakes, but it's not that useful when you're dealing with the likes of dwarves, because they do not have a lot of cavalry. So, I predicted here, and I'm probably, if I would play Rune, I would never use the, the stakes with these guys, uh, just because I will be the cavalry master, I will be the guy fielding the cavalry. Now, 190 meters and high accuracy and 30 missiles of missile attack 5, it's pretty good, it's a pretty good unit. I think it's a very balanced unit for the faction. Um, uh, if you had a better unit on this case, then the AI would just have to attack you, and that would be always bad for them, because you have some bikes, you have you know all the types of units that you need there. Okay, let's talk about, um, there's some other units here. Um, the Runic Clansmen, you know, just basic militia. I would honestly get these guys just for uh, free upkeep um, duty. And then you have the Clan Hunters, which are even worse. You know, just a range unit of 150. No reason not to get, uh, with these stats, no reason not to get uh, Clan Crossbowmen instead. Uh, you know, and of course there's that upkeep issue, they're very inexpensive, but you know. The Balshot Tribesmen, now these guys might be good. Skilled against mounts, um, with a 9 missile attack, range 55, decreases average, and they only have 3 missiles. You know, I would prefer this missile attack to be like 6 or 7, 
end this to be higher, but you know, you can't have everything. Uh, considering the cost, it's actually not that bad. So these are units just to get, you know, when you're in a rush or when you want some units to, you know, do something. Uh, because you're getting attacked or something like that. Now, what would I like to tell you? Okay, you do have local Rim bodyguards, you know, which is rather cool. Um, you know, do remember that they're skilled against mounts, I forgot about that. But here we go to the units that I wanted to show you. So you have the Candy Slaver Camp. Now, actually have the Varig encampment. Uh, let's talk about that. So, first of all, it provides a lot of free upkeep units. Always goes for that. Uh, the morale bonus, not really that interesting, but still helps. And then you have access to most of their roster. Actually, it stops like this, so I can uh, put it like that. Now, I have Marauders, which is an interesting cavalry unit. It's very cheap. It's cheapest than yours, than your earliest, and you get a skilled against mount uh, cavalry. It's quite interesting. It's quite an interesting unit to have. Uh, you have Step Tribesmen, and you have Step Archers. Honestly, I would never produce these guys. They are worse than my own. Um, but then you have to start having some interesting units. These nomad horsemen are better overall uh, because of the uh, of the upkeep and the skill against mounts than your uh, cavalry as well. So do consider that, guys. It's kind of interesting because they will attack the the enemy cavalry much better than your um, than your horse cavalry, um, at least in the early game. Then you have some nomad warriors. Basic infantry, you will need, you won't need these. These nomad X-Men might be interesting because they do have the effect of against armor. However, you already have the clan gods, so you know, just go for that. It's, it's I think it's even less upkeep, so just consider that. Of course, in a rush, you can use this. Finally, you have the Varig warriors, and and these guys are kind of like they're they're not their elite, but they're definitely good um, to have on any of your armies just because of the attack value. Um, I would say just get a couple of units of them and just check what they they matter. Uh, you might be able to purchase the very good campaign before having the other units available, so you know it's also nice. It's also more units, you know. Then you have the very horse archers. Uh, you also have some over there which are better, uh, but I'm I'm actually going to compare you. So the Brotherhood of the Bow is actually a, a, an archer unit and a ho or a horse archer unit, and you can see the stats just blatantly improved. They do have the effect against armor, so be mindful of these guys. Accuracy high with 140 meters, and if you consider the horse archers, they do not have the same thing. They have less um, missile range as well. So what, honestly, I would always get the Brotherhood of the Bow if I could, uh, especially because they are very heavy cavalry. I mean, you're not going to charge th against these guys. Um, they will, they're uh, skilled against mounts, so if anyone charges them, they, are, they can actually pretty much uh, field from themselves. Uh, they have almost the stats of your local Inez. Your local Inez is like 924, so do be mindful of that. These guys can cause a lot of damage. Now let's talk about these uh, other units. The Brotherhood of the X. 922 with a th 390 and effective against armor. These are better version of your Loki Inner's Rim like you've seen. Um, look, uh, well, I don't know. The guys that are effective against armor. They were only 620. These guys can field. You should field these guys probably against the dwarves if you can. Uh, even though that you're going to have to pay for them. But still, they're more effective. You ha also have the Brotherhood of the Swords. I wouldn't consider... Of course, you can use these guys as well. Um, they have a very ar heavy armor class, but 1124, without having the bonuses against uh, uh, against armored units, I don't think that they are that good, and you have better options for those. Finally, you have the last unit here, which is the Brotherhood of the Lands. It's a very heavy cavalry, and it's better than your Inus, a little bit more costly. So, um, it's better than your Loki units, honestly. Skilled against mounts and the frightened nearby enemy infantry. Um, they're rather impetuous, so be careful about that. Still, it's, it's an interesting addition that you can actually get the canned outposts. Uh, some of you might ask, well, how can you build them? I don't know if you can build them everywhere, but certainly you can see that I already have it here. Okay, so I don't know if there's an event that cancels it out or not. 
but uh, whatever it is guys it just uh, it doesn't show up on the first 10 turns trust me um, and it, that will give you some good time for that now units aside I'm gonna explain what I believe the this army of rune has they have very good elites but they are too shiny as you can see even the very units are offsetting them they're, they're much better than yours or a little bit better than yours uh, in terms of stats and everything they just cost a little bit more and it's not a problem for you so I feel like rune actually f the the main the main idea about the armies of rune is that they are actually able to field so many you're gonna be able to field a lots of those shiny armored troops um, which is kind of very interesting uh, idea as well uh, I do predict that you're not going to use any loca units um, before you destroy the Orwinian, uh, and then you're mainly going to go against Dale and the Dwarves with just the, the loca units. Now you have li high late of keep, like I've mentioned, but that's not a problem. That's not a problem for you, um, because uh, as long as you control this uh, this uh, this uh, lake here, there will be no problem to you, and you'll be fine. Um, in terms of finances, I would like to note, so uh, there are some mines specifically here, 600 in Mataram, and here in, in Mahad, uh, sorry about the pronunciation, uh, you can actually do this right away, you know, the, the first turn what I built was this, when I was uh, just making my playthrough. I think I built a clan guard or something like that as well. Um, yeah, I, th I think this is actually my first turn, or did I build... No, I built the grain exchange. Exactly. I built the grain exchange here. So basically, you can get all those mines initially. That will hinder your economy, and then, as soon as they are built, it will pop up again. I found out that you can actually have good finances after the mines, and it's... Uh, of course, they will be perfect after the like. You've seen that on my Darwinian campaign. Uh, Rune only benefits even more from that. Um, I already mentioned the generals. Of course, you start with eight generals. That's awesome. You know, that's a lot of cavalry. They are costly in upkeep, so be be mindful that you may also want to, to purchase the meeting halls. Um, oh, one small addition. Let me show you. Not here. So, where is it? Oh, the shrines. There we go. So, the shrines of miracle, you can actually get on the stronghold. You can actually... Get, get the Dark Temple of Melkor, which provides at least a free upkeep unit. I don't know if it's important considering that. And the retraining costs. Um, just to mention, you know, some, some other places don't have that. Of course, in terms of Castlefall, you can also get four free upkeep units. So that would mean five free upkeep units. Um, I think you actually have some other. Five, six, seven, and if you had the... Um, have the canned outposts 7, 10. You can actually get 10 free upkeep units on a castle, uh, on a very, very well developed castle, which is half an army uh, on free upkeep. It's really cool. Oh, by the way, you do have forts. Exactly. You start with some forts. Uh, they're rather close. This one isn't. Uh, they're rather in a good position. And of course, if you capture this uh, Kadas Falathrim, you'll get access to another fort there. Um, additionally, there's also a fort here. From this um, this place, this uh, I'm actually gonna show you. I'm just gonna move this yeah. guy. Let's see if I can find it. Okay, there's a battle here. So hello, do mi be mindful about rebels, even though they are just fort units. You know, and they created these fort units mostly to be the rebels. It's kind of fine. But I wanted to show you that there's a city here, and then there's a castle there. If you can control this, it's also good for your upkeep as well. Um, I think that's it. You just start with the spy. I uh, advise you to get a uh, diplomat. You'll probably get peace treaties with a lot of guys. So I think in overall this is a very good faction to play with. Um, it has some replay value in case you don't want to go to war against Orwinian. It also has some replay value in case you want to backstab Mordor or something like that. It's very really interesting when you try to do so. Um, yeah, I think it's pretty much one of the... Um, the standard uh, evil uh, enemies, let's say, you know, if you consider Mordor, Rune and Harad have always been, no matter the mod, the very interesting factions to play with, uh, you know, very different. Uh, now there's the addition of Shadow of Mirkwood, which is also really interesting, it starts in the middle of them. Um, but right now I kind of prefer, um, I kind of like how Rune looks like. Um, 
um, and how it would become, um, how it can use its uh, its forces to to become an empire. All right, that will be it. Thank you guys. Oh, sorry about that. I'm actually just sleepy and getting tired of speaking this much. So thank you guys for watching this uh, overview. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys on the next overview. Next one would be Shadow of Mordor. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.